Welcome to the Compressor Guru. Today we've got a teardown on a 325 Quincy. This is a very good machine. This machine's almost as old as I am and the customer doesn't want to replace it. He's going to retire before he ever needs to replace this. All we need to do is do a good rebuild on it. This machine has a knock. When it first starts up, it knocks. When it gets oil pressure, the knock goes away. I suspect when we tear it apart, we're going to find a loose wrist pin. And it's not going to be loose. It's going to be only so loose that when oil pressure comes up, it takes the knock out. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the wheel off so that we can slide it back on the table a little bit. We're going to use my homemade cherry picker. We built this I guess 30 years ago out of scrap steel and you know when you don't have anything you make nothing do and uh, anyway this is not a tapered shaft there is no bolt on the end of it so we can't leave a bolt or a nut on the end of the shaft and catch it we're going to pull the wheel and as the wheel comes off we're going to use the hoist to catch the wheel so it doesn't go all the way to the floor that gravity thing will break the wheel, but we're going to catch it. Okay. So, what you're looking at here is the tag on the compressor. You'll see it's a 325, and it's real important. Up in that right-hand corner, you see record of change, 10. Anytime you're ordering parts for a Quincy Resip, you need to know what the record of change is if nobody's ever been in the machine before. You need to know what the record of change is because, for instance, these unloaders are different than uh, the record of change for 15 and 20. This is a record of change of 10. This is the old style unloader. And the record of change basically tells you what type of wrist pins they used on the inside, which, uh, which oil pump it has, and a whole lot of little things that you wouldn't think about. And you'd say, oh, it's a 325. Well, yeah. And uh, every time they had a record of change change, it meant they changed something in the build material. So this is a record of change 10, and that's what we ordered the parts for. You'll also see that we were looking inside the uh, uh, flywheel at the intercooler. And I, you'll see how dirty this is. The uh, intercooler is just filthy, and that did not help this machine. The, the machine is the Quincy QR series pumps are so overbuilt. I can't say it helped it, but it may not have hurt it. Guys, if you let your intercooler get dirty like this, you're going to shorten the life of your machine. This machine failed for another reason. We'll find out what the uh, valves look like when we tear it apart. But now we're going to get, we're going to get started and we're going to pull this wheel off. So these wheels have a couple half inch bolts that have three quarter heads and on the other side they're a square nut so they're actually pretty easy to uh, hold the square nut side because usually the square nut falls against the, or goes against a stop that's in there. That one's loose. That easy. This is an air cooled after cooler. And it wasn't cooling a whole lot between the stages. That's, uh, needless to say, way too dirty. So, the next step is we're going to take this cooler off and then we're going to start on the valves. And 
And like so many of these compressors, we're going to go to fast forward, but like so many of these compressors, there's no room for a ratchet or even at the end of a gear wrench to speed up. Oh, didn't know that was like that. There's no room on the bottom side for a ratchet. However, this is different than the 10 horsepower I usually work on. This holds the belt guard on and we will put it on in the same place for the customer when it goes out of here. I've told you before that if you don't know how something might go back together, get your cell phone out, take a picture of it. So I'll remind you of this when I go back together, but got a bracket down here at the bottom of the inner core and you may think to yourself oh we don't need that bracket it's held by up here well there's enough vibration in these machines if you don't put this bracket back in that cord will vibrate enough it'll break here or possibly down here where the bracket was it is important to when you reassemble to make sure that bracket's in there straight to the parts washer for an overnight soak. <laughs> like I said before, if you may not know how something goes back together or you're not sure, make sure you take a picture of it. We're going to take our unloaders, we're going to take our lines off our unloaders first and, uh, and this breather tube. <laughs> These are our unloaders and they can work either for the dual pilot or they can work for a loadless start. This machine has a hydraulic unloader right here and when there's no oil pressure it lets air from the tank up to these head unloaders and it'll set in freewheel. So when you're starting the machine up in the morning and let, maybe there's a hundred pound pressure still in the tank from the night before and instead of starting against a hundred pound it starts up because there's air in here un, or disabling these valves there's air in here disabling these valves and so it sets in free wheels till the pressure comes up when I say pressure I mean the oil pressure when the oil pressure comes up this little valve over here closes, the air stops going up here, and the machine starts to pump. So we're going to take these off. And it is okay to take things apart with an impact, but never put them together with an impact. Get hammered all day and not got that loose. When you're going back together, do not forget these. They're an unloader pin. So am I going to them so fast that nobody saw them? Okay. So 
we're to the point now where you really want to un at loosen these <clears throat> and loosen these. Because when these valve plates are off, they're really hard to hold in a vise, even in a vise, and get those nuts off. These should be an inch and a sixteenth. And I hope it comes off easy because I don't hammer on my super crumbs. There we go. Are super crumbs the kind of wrench you're using? This is an SK super chrome. I spent a lot of money on these wrenches. Mm -hmm. I need that. That was just purely for the audience. Oh, okay. Three-eighths Allen wrench. And we'll break that loose here. Allen wrench. That's why we loosen this while we have the weight of the compressor to hold that for us. Yes, I'm going to use my super chrome the way I don't want to. When we have situations like this, there's been times I've broken this adjustment screw. This is your valve adjustment screw. And quite frankly, when that happens, we occasionally have to replace the entire plate with a new screw. I do have a used one on stock for the customer. And it looks like that's where we're going next. This is a very old machine. <laughs> soaking with PB Blaster. We've only been successful with one valve adjustment. But you definitely want to take the nuts off and try to get these valve adjustments loose. I will soak this with PB Blaster and finagle and work with them off camera. But if this is something you want to do. You want to get this stuff all loose before you take it off the compressor because it's usually easier to do on the compressor than off. how we unloaded it. The customer brought the chain and I'm going to use the chain to possibly pick the head off because the head's coming next. The plates are, three of them are off. We'll go soak them in the parts washer and then we can be faster. Can we see one of those close up before sure. you put it in there? Sure. Because you think everybody's seen these. Yeah, I do. So, this screw right here, when you put this together, we'll talk about this later. But this screw right here, you need to have quite a ways out, at least past the flush point on the bottom of this. That way, when you go back together, 
you torque your bolts down and then you screw the screw down and your, and your valve is tight. And that's nothing but a spacer, that's what the screw hits and it holds the valve down. And this is a exhaust valve. I'm going to turn it sideways so you can see all parts of it. Oh. Does it look damaged at all? No, this machine was pumping when it came out. It might be wore out, but it was pumping. Spacer. Okay, so this is a different kind of hold down. The, the screw goes against the outside of this radius here. And that pin that we showed you earlier hits right here and pushes down on those pins. That all looks good. We will take a lot of time when we're going back together with this machine, and uh, especially in the valve rebuild portion and reassembly to show you what all that is and why it matters. And there's an intake valve with a motor springs and pins. So here's a spring in there as well. And these are the exact same springs that you saw in the episode at Roarball Lumber when we were fixing the valve at Roarball Lumber. And we will replace all those. They did not come in the kit, but we will put new springs and pins in. So. Same thing on the high pressure side. Exact same valve. The intake and the discharge valves don't matter from high pressure or low pressure. They're the same valve. It's just where they're positioned at in the head. If you did notice, the discharge valves are both on the side with the discharge tube. The suction valves are both on the other side where there was a filter and they just screwed a piece of pipe in it. And that's, ooh, now this is interesting. This is the high pressure discharge. This is the last valve that the air goes through before it goes into the tank. And we have a considerable amount of carbon buildup. So, we do have a set of rings. We are going to hone it and re-ring the machine. But that's evidence that the, uh, at least the high pressure side is okay, used. Turn it toward me a little bit more. There you go. This is evidence that at least the high pressure side is using some oil. And I have seen these on the 350s, which is the 10 horse version of these which I've literally rebuilt a thousand of them. Uh, I've seen these valves so caked up for the rings passing so much oil, you couldn't take them out like this. You took the heads off and took a hammer and a drift and drove them out from the bottom side. So, and this comes up from right here. And under here you have a little plastic ball at least in the newer machines, you have a little plastic ball that when the pressure in the uh, crankcase goes a little higher, it pushes, it allows the air to pop up and come up here and go through the intake air. The 325s and the 350s are internally breathed and make them a excellent choice for a dirty environment so that if you have sawdust, if you have dust from a coal strippings, uh, that you don't end up <clears throat> with contaminated oil because it breathes the crankcase atmosphere. <clears throat> so that makes this a very good choice for the rough, for the hard service environments. And, 12 point, half inch. Oh. 
A friend of mine from CMA used to say, well, the state model for Pennsylvania is work smarter, not harder. So instead of manhandling this and lifting it off, we're going to pick on it and tap it and it should fall. some corrosion. I'm going to spend a little time cleaning them up. Get a chisel. and gently change shown Hank Mosebrook works smarter not harder and to the parts washer with you Next step, we're going to take and we're going to loosen the cylinder walls, but then we're going to spin it around so that camera can see. We're also going to take our connecting rods loose in the bottom. So there's six bolts around the bottom of this connecting the cylinder wall to the crankcase. And about now we're going into fast forward because this gets boring. Okay, so we have another line to take off here where the hydraulic unloader is. Okay, our breather tube just wiggles right out. There's no ring, we'll replace that O ring, and of course, we'll wash that. We're going to take the side cover off, and I do not know if they drain you well out of this. Ah, looks like they tried to drain you well. We have taken all the bolts out from the cylinder wall to the crankcase. And I took the side plate off from, to give me access to the connecting rods. And we're going to take those off. I have the sad suspicion we're not going to be able to get them off until we lift the cylinder, but we're going to take the bottom, or we're going to take the nuts off anyway, just in case we get lucky. It is very important, oh, it is very important that you keep the right connecting rod cap with the right connecting rod and that they are, go back together the same way they came apart. If you do not know how these go together before you ever take a nut off, take a center punch and let me finish this. If you do not know how these go back together, you take a center punch and you can see on that nice flat surface, there's a top and a bottom. Put one center punch there, put one center punch on the other side, and then go to the other side and put two center punches on the bottom and two center punches on the top. 
Now you can't get to the other sides, so there's no punch marks on it. And you know the one rod is number one, one rod is number two. And furthermore, you can't switch them that way for the bottom going or for the cap of the rod going on to the rod itself because you actually have them marked right here. Moving on. They're not going to come off. And you might be going, Bud, why did you go to the trouble of taking the side cover and taking those nuts off if you're just going to pull this up anyway? The reason being is these are held in place and they're not flopping back and forth. And these nuts are easier to get off if your cylinder is still on. And even if we're going to pull the cylinder and let the, we'll let the pistons and rods flop, that's okay it's still easier to get these nuts off while everything's in place up here. Our connecting rods, the nuts are off. They're not loose from the crank yet, but I put a half inch eye bolt in one of the bolts that held the head on. I'm going to take a little bit of pressure off. And I'm going to get a putty knife. Okay, so we're Use the weight of the compressor. It's that easy. Chances are this rod's round. Chances are this rod is ruined because the wrist pin was pounding inside of the top side of the connecting rod. However, the in case it's savable, I kept this paired the way it should be. Now we've got to get the low pressure side off. And I've never had to turn one over like this to get them loose. This is an unusually difficult situation. Most difficult 325 I've ever had to get apart. And we did it for you. <laughs> There's a little hidden Allen screw that holds this control section on. And like everything else, apparently, this one's nice and tight.
this is a dual pilot control valve and I'm not going to explain it in this episode because we are eliminating this. Okay, we're just about done for our tear down and what we're going to do is I'm going to take this keyway off that helps the uh, flywheel from slipping. I gotta take knock that keyway out of there. <laughs> Darn it. Oh. That was easy. Look how easy that was. Well, that would make this be difficult. Now, there's a seal here. So the reason we took this keyway, uh, the key out of the keyway, is because we're going to take this seal off next. The seal in the seal container, and it would not have come past the, uh, yeah. you have a set of shims here and these roller bearings are set at zero clearance. They're not tight, they're not loose and in order to set the clearance you adjust your shims. If it's loose you uh, take a shim out and if it's tight you put a shim in and loosen things up and uh, try it again. So what I recommend when you're initially tearing down, keep these all together. And I'm going to just set them aside. And sometimes I will take and I'll put a tie wrap through there so we don't lose any of the shims. Because if we end up not having to change the roller bearings, then we don't have to re-shim. We can simply put this back on. And maybe if there's a little bit of wear, take the thinnest of these out and we're set to go again. But uh, we're definitely going to have to change the seal. The seal is garbage. And uh, it's not going to surprise me we have to change the roller bearings. But in case we don't, we're not going to just toss those shims away. So we're going to turn the compressor around. We're going to pull the oil pump. Now I'm going to work from here, Val. Well, With your permission. I'm on a cord. Oh, you're on a cord. You buy extra batteries, folks. I was on a battery, but now I'm on a cord. Okay. So, we got ourselves a series of bolts around this. We're going to have to take the oil pressure gauge out. And we will put an oil pressure gauge in. Yeah. Because we don't think that it works. I know, it, I know it works, but we want to make sure that it is accurate. Quite frankly, the fact that this shows oil pressure with all that gunk in the crankcase just amazes me. type oil pump and when we get this plate off you're going to see four veins in an eccentric and we want to make sure the veins aren't bored too bad uh, and then we will uh, determine whether we can use this pump over or if we're going to, have to get a new carrier or something. Uh, Quincy does not sell 
Now, I don't think the aftermarket sell a kit. Well, they might sell a kit to fix the new style pump. I know they do. But they never sold a kit for the old style pump. And if this pump goes bad, you have to buy this whole assembly, and it's rather pricey. seen it where those wear to where they're down to here and it's a flat uh, then it turns into a flat uh, vein there but that quite frankly for being almost 60 years old that's in beautiful condition so he shouldn't need a new oil pump considering he's able to draw oil out of that muck is absolutely amazing so I'm going to put that back on you need to wipe off all that. I'm not, I'll tear it apart and it, we will do. Parts cleaner will take care of all that. Oh, okay. That would be. Bud is the parts yes. cleaner. Yes. I know the how. The guru I'm, only does these things. I know how I'm spending them more. <laughs> so. And I'll be nice and clean when I come home, babe. <laughs> uh -huh. I'll smell like gasoline and fuel. I won't be there. That's my best quality. <laughs> That's better than some of the other smells you've had. Sorry. Yeah, I'm totally sorry. Did I drop that other bowl on the You before? did. Okay. At least we know where it's at. Yeah, I'm looking for it, but I don't know where it's at. Oh, but is that one your washer down there? By yeah, there's a washer down there. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was way back under. Oh, that's a different washer. Okay. I got, I've, I've been drawing stuff right along. I'm just going to tighten two of these up. Now, on the 350, which is the 10 horse version of this, there's some nice parts about the 350s. First off, there's two hand holes, and it makes the connecting rods much easier to get off but on the 350s there's a little bit of a tab here and you can actually just put a screwdriver in there and pop the oil pump loose there's not nearly as good of a tab there but we're going to take and we're going to pump right here and see Shaft will go to the parts washer and we will closely inspect. First off, the journals are beautiful, but we'll closely inspect the roller bearings. And just at first glance, they don't look too bad for 50 year old, 60 year old bearings. But if they're bad, we will replace them. If they're not bad, all we have to do is change the seal in that seal holder, and we already have it shimmed to go back together. That's why we didn't take those shims and just toss them in the bucket. We actually want to keep that a match set because it's matched to this crankshaft the way it's worn right now. 
Last thing we want to do is this right here is actually the oil filler, for lack of a better way. There's a screen in all that duck in there. And we're going to pull that screen out and then I'm going to scoop all that gunk out and guess what I'm doing tomorrow? I'm cleaning parts. So you can get out of the way. No, it helps me move around, baby. <laughs> from the Black Lagoon. Yep. Now I'm going to keep one thread there and then I'm going to go get a bucket and let that drain overnight so a lot of the gunk's out of it. Alright. My life uh, for the next several hours is going to consist of cleaning parts, doing some evaluations, and we'll bring you back episode by episode when we do the valve rebuilds, when we uh, reset the crankshaft in the crankcase and do work on a oil pump. There's plenty of episodes coming to rebuild your 325. And I thank you. God bless you. We appreciate it. Like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Uh, the algorithm for YouTube uh, helps us a great deal. If you just hit that like button, even if you hit the unlike button, well, I don't like that, but that's okay. It helps the algorithm to go know that we're getting traffic. Thank you. God bless. We'll be back in two weeks with the next episode. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching this episode of The Compressor Guru. Please hit like and subscribe and use the notify bell so you will know when the next new episode is released from The Compressor Guru. God bless you and have a great day.